Namaste. Welcome to Zoom Yoga number 42. And also, as always, we'll start with the, the quote. I've got two quotes today from Albert Einstein. The first one is, life is like riding a bicycle. You have to keep moving. Life is like riding a bicycle. You have to keep moving. So today, a relaxation will be from a standing position whilst we're moving. So if you'd like to come up into a standing position, Stand tall, imagine someone has put a thread, or imagine you have a thread in the center of your scalp and someone is gently pulling at it, elongating your body, initiating a feeling of lightness and weightlessness. So without looking down, sense and feel that your feet are parallel, round about hip width apart, and stand tall. And just take a moment or two just to reflect on where you're at, how you're feeling. And count your blessings. So we're just going to come up on our toes with an inhalation and slowly lower the heels down with an exhalation. And we're going to have our thumbs tucked into our fists. Every other part of the, of the movement it doesn't require muscle contraction, remain relaxed. So we inhale as we gently come up in the toes, open our fingers, release our thumbs, wait for your natural pause. And then we'll lower down again, slowly, slowly, just caressing the ground with your heels and tucking your thumbs back into your fingers. So we're not having the arms out like this. We're not coming up and trying to get the balance. Everything is relaxed. We inhale as we come up, release. Exhale down and gently, gently tuck the thumbs into the fingers. You can have a comfort breath. You can have two, you can have three. You adapt the posture to suit your needs in any particular day. If you want to add another feature to this, the next time you come up, you take your thumb and touch your first finger with sa. Exhale down, you touch the second finger with ta. Inhale up the third finger with na. Always waiting for your natural pause. Exhale down, ma. Sa, ta, na, ma. There have, there have been many books written about this mantra. The um, Interpretation that I like is truth is our identity. So you inhale as you come up, thumb to first finger, sa. Exhale down, ta. Inhale up, na. Exhale down, ma, sa. Don't worry if you lose your balance. Don't worry if you're wobbly. It takes a bit of time to build up the muscle control and also relax in the areas that don't need to be involved. Because if you contract muscles that are not part of the process, this will put you off balance as well. And it's okay if you lose balance because we're not always in a state of balance. Sa. Ta. Na, ma. You can stop at any time and take a few deep breaths and just check that you are relaxed in the face, in the neck, in the shoulders, in the arms. If you wish to add another level, then we we'll introduce alternate nostril breathing, but mentally. 
So as we come up, touching the first finger and saying na, you breathe in through the left nostril. Wait for your pause. As you go down, you exhale, ta through the right nostril. Touching the second finger. Then we come up, na, we inhale through the right. Touching the third finger. And then when you go down, exhale through the left with ma, touching the fourth. So there's a lot going on there. Pick the level that works for you today. And if your mind's still being polluted by, by thoughts, then there's not much more I can do. Sata nama, in left, out right, in right, out left. One finger, two finger, three, four. Truth is our identity. This is a lovely one to do at the end of the day. It's not so tiring and it will help with the body of some of the more unsavory moments of the day. Remember, if your ankles begin to ache a little, will you stop and you just continue with the thumb movements with the fingers, the mantra, and the alternate nostril? Or pick one aspect that you want to continue, standing tall. Just do the mantra, allowing the body to breathe naturally. You can adapt this simple movement in so many ways. So after finishing the movement that you're on, just stand tall. and try and sense what's happened to your breathing, what's happened to your energy, what's happened to your mindset. And then you'll be able to decide if this is for you. Perhaps this isn't for you, but you've thousands of other postures to choose from. Okay, we're now gonna do sun salutation. Again, there's many variations of sun salutation. You can do it dynamically and thrash through it, or you can do it meditatively and slow every movement down and breathe copiously between each movement. We'll just go for the middle way. It's 12 movements starting going back with the right foot, then forward with the left. And then it's 12 movements going back with the left foot, then forward with the right. So I'll talk you through the first round, and then I'll just do a couple rounds to demonstrate. And you can pause the video or you can rewind and look and get comfortable with what you're doing. And I add a, a twist after each 12 as well, which isn't part of the traditional sun salutation, but I like that added benefit. So namaste to begin with, number one, namaste. Number two, we raise the arms and lean back. Number three, we bend forward. Number four, we step back with the right foot, right knee in the ground. Number five, we go back with the left leg, downward facing dog. Number six, we take the elbows in, eight parts of the body on the ground. Seven, up into cobra. Eight, downward facing dog. Nine, forward with the left foot. Ten, forward bend. Eleven, as we come up, open the arms. Twelve, namaste.
You allow the body for the breath to, to normalize if you're out of breath. And then normally we're going to do the next 12, but I like a simple twist. So we stretch our arms out. Inhale and we twist to the right. Keeping the elbow up. Three breaths. Inhale to neutral. Exhale to the left. Lift up, look up. Stretch out. So that's 12 simple movements, first half of sun salutation. And we start again with the next 12. Namaste, number one. Two, three, forward bend. Step back with the left foot, four. Step back with the right, five. Elbows in close to the body, eight parts on the ground, six. Cobra, seven. Downward facing dog, eight. Forward with the right, nine. Forward bend, 10. Eleven. Leaning back. Namaste, 12. Allow the body to recalibrate, the breath normalize if you're out of breath, and we add our twist. Three breaths. Stretch up, lift up, look up, and release. So it's a simple sun salutation with a twist at the end of each movement. Stand tall. And we'll try it once more. I will just demonstrate this time without speaking. I will just say the numbers. Number one. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that was obviously back with the right, forward with the left. Do a twist. Three breaths.
And the next 12 going back with the left, forward with the right. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Always wait until your body normalizes with the breathing pattern. And then we add a twist. Three breaths. So that gives you a wonderful exercise, a sun salutation. You see how simple it is, how gentle you can do it, how slowly and adding a twist. It's a wonderful way to waken up to, or even last thing at night, slowly, just to ease away the day. It's swaying palm tree, I believe I've got next. Kati Chakrasana, swaying palm tree. So take your heels to the back of the mat, so you know they're in line. As always, there's two ways to do this. We can have it simple like this, or you can turn the clasp around, which is a stronger stretch. We'll keep it easy for today. And a simple sway in palm tree. So we inhale and exhale as you just sway down to the side. First point of resistance. Inhale as you come up. You can re-engage the stretch if you wish. Exhale down to the other side. So you're not bending forward, you're not bending back. Lateral stretch. Inhale up, you can exhale down or you can stop, lift up and take that stretch down to the side. Inhale, exhale, you can inhale, lift up again and then down. Nice and easy. Slow, smooth, deep breaths, and this down to the first point of resistance. You can stay down laterally if you wish and add breaths, but there's other postures you can do that with. Inhale up, exhale down. It's a lovely, gentle stretch. Of course, if you want to try, you can reverse the clasp, which again makes it a lot more Challenging, and then down to go. You get the idea. Inhale up and gently stretch out. Hmm. As always, try and feel that your feet are parallel, sense that they're parallel. Allow the body to have a couple of breaths. Kati Chakrasana. So we're going to take our left arm, I'm watching my microphone here, over the top. And you don't just place it there, you take the elbow, give it a shove, 
and the right arm goes round to side. With your feet parallel, we're just going to twist to the right. Exhale as you twist. First point of resistance. And you can feel the stretch from the ankles, the knees, the hips, the lower back. And you just start to breathe. And once you feel comfortable in the position, then you turn your head, turn your chin to the right as well. So remember six seconds it takes for the body to start to release. So that's me feeling, um, sorry, I've dropped my apologies, I've dropped my chin, I was being lazy, resting my chin in my arm. Keep your neck long. And then when you feel ready, you can turn your chin around to the right as well. Slow, smooth, deep breaths. And you're not pushing, you're allowing. When you're ready to come out, release the chin. And then slowly unravel, and I mean slowly. And you'll feel the blood and the lymph, the circulation rushing back into the areas. Release the one behind your back. Slowly release this. You get a lovely feeling of relaxation. So now we do the same to the left. This is no use. We take the elbow and push the arm over and clasp the middle of your back. It's around the bottom. Realign your feet. They may have moved with a twist. Keep your neck long. Inhale. And around we go to the left. First point of resistance. And just breathe. Breathe, believe, and receive. Breathe, believe, and receive. When you feel that you've got round to your furthest point, then you release the chin around to the left. Breathe, believe, and receive. Release the chin, back to neutral, and then slowly unravel. Release your left arm. Release your right. I love that feeling of everything rushing back into the areas it's been squeezed and stretched. Now I believe it's warrior one and warrior two. Yes, and bow and arrow. So heels are at the back of the mat. So we're going to take a reasonable stance. We're going to swivel on our left foot. Make sure your heels are at the back of the mat, which keeps them in line. And we take our right foot and turn it in 45 degrees because we're turning the whole body around for warrior one. So turning this right foot in 45 allows us the movement to come around. We're going to check that the knee does not go beyond the top of the ankle. 
So this, this can be fine when we go into the lunge. This can be fine for warrior. All of these are fine. I need to come out a bit further. So this is the kind of position we're looking for. But if you come here or here or here, they are all okay. But you don't want to do this. You don't want to be too narrow and come forward and do that. Too much of a strain on the knee. So just check you're in a good position. Yeah, that's not too bad for me. Knee directly above ankle. Right foot 45 degrees in, and we turn the torso around. So there's two ways of doing this, as always. You can raise the arms and keep them straight, or you can just do a namaste. We're trying to keep this left leg, we're trying to keep the inside of the knee overtaking the outside, and that will keep the joint open. If you come in to the center with the knee, then you'll lose your balance. So this is what we're hoping for. Turn around, inhale as we lift up. Exhale as we go into the lunge, warrior one. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, soften. You can look up, you can lean back a little. I don't like uh, leaning back. That's not for me, but inhale, lift up and soften. And try and keep this knee open. If you come in, this is where you lose your balance. Your other option is instead of leaning, instead of stretching right up, namaste, which squeezes the shoulder blades as well. It's a strong one. You're trying not to bend this leg here. You're trying to keep this leg straight and push right down and keep the whole of the right foot on the ground. I think you've got it. From here, we can go straight into warrior two without changing side. So we take this foot, the right foot, and make sure the outside of the right foot is parallel with the edge of the mat. Because we're not turning the hips around with warrior two, we're trying to keep the body open to the front. And this is where the inside of the knee is important to overtake the outside. You're not coming in like this. You're keeping all of this open this strong, turning around, warrior two. So you're not this, you're not this, you're not that, unless you especially want to. We're keeping the chest open. This, the tendency is to come into the middle, so you don't, you push it out wide. That keeps you your balance. Gives you your balance, my apologies. So they're quite strong, these postures, but once you get the rudiments, then you can stand in them long enough once you've built up the muscle control. Inhale out, down. Swivel on the left heel. We come round on the right, and we're gonna repeat. Obviously, warrior one, warrior two. So we take the left foot, take it in 45, which again allows us to come round with the hips. Check your stance. See, I'm actually, I can go wider. As long as you're comfortable. Keep his leg straight. You don't bend it down. Turn around. Inhale. And soften through. One side is always tighter than the other, obviously. And you can do your namaste if you prefer, but you've got to keep the body around, keep this open. And it's very strong in the legs. Warrior two, we with the left foot, so it's in line with the edge of the mat, parallel. Because we're not taking the hips around, we're keeping this open, we're keeping this leg going out to the right. Warrior two. That's not too bad. So you don't want stuff like this, you don't want stuff like this. 
You don't want this away out, knee over the top, you'll just damage your body. This keeps straight, flat down a line. Warrior two. Looking over your middle finger. That gives you a general idea of warrior one and warrior two. Now you can't be a warrior if you don't have a bow and arrow. So we will do bow and arrow. So you don't need such a wide stance for bow and arrow. You can if you wish. But we've got our bow. Now if I take my right arm, my left arm around, I want to reach halfway. So you're stretching, stretching. Less, less, less. And then you've got the stretch to go forward to reach your bow, to pull back. The way your arrow goes. So you're wanting a secure base here, so your aim is good. You're really stretching out through here. You're not just doing this, because it's rubbish. Look, you're not getting any stretch. But if it's out like this, and this is really kicking in now, pull back. It's up to you how long you stay in these, but as long as you've got the basics right, then it's less likely you're going to do any harm. The heels are in line with the edge of the mat, which is the starting point. Change direction for the bone arrow for the other side. Check it you're not slippy. Check it you're comfortable. Again, I can go wider. Stretch out with the left arm. Really stretch through. If you don't stretch, that can easy, nothing's happening. This is just a waste of time. But if you really stretch through, take okay, aim. We can be here long enough. A few breaths. You get the idea. It's up to you how much you put into each posture. Heel toe together. Again, you're protecting the body. You're not coming from here and going, <clears throat> putting all the weight on one leg. You might slip, you might damage yourself. You always try and treat yourself with respect. Others too. Now we'll have a bit of fun. So feet slightly more than hip width apart. A bit of mantra, a bit of fun. Stretch out, imagine you're pushing against two brick walls. So you're inhaling and you're pushing. I am healthy. I am healthy. I'm down on your haunches. I am strong. I am strong. Up you come, come in a bit, up on your toes. I am full of vitality. I am full of vitality. Give yourself a hug. I'll give myself a gentle hug because my microphone is here. Relax. I am safe. I am safe. And then when you're ready, stretch up. Lift up, all is well in my world. Big circle of the world, namaste. It's a nice mantra to say when you're driving in your car, when you can't get to sleep at night, you don't have to do all these physical things. It's a nice mantra, we'll do that again. So we're pushing against two brick walls as you inhale. I am healthy. Down in our haunches. I am strong. Of course, you can be shouting this out. I think my microphone will just boom if I do that. In you come. Up on the toes. I am full of vitality. Relax. Give yourself a big, big hug. I am safe.
And then when you're ready, these are good stretches as well. Stretch up all as well in my world. And regardless of what you're going through, it invariably is. I'm going to do some um, alternate nostril in any sitting position. So get comfortable in a chair or on a stool, Sukhasana. I like Vajrasana. I like this position where you just sit down on the heels, which I never used to be able to do years ago. You can put some cushions under the legs if you wish. You can put some cushions between the heels and your bottom until you get used to the posture. But it's a wonderful way. It keeps the back straight. Once you build up the time, you can sit like this. It's a wonderful way to sit and relax. And apparently it's very good if you have any digestive ailments. It's very good for aiding digestion. Vajrasana. So we did mental alternate nostril breathing earlier on. So now we just do the physical. There's many different counts you can do. You can breathe in for a certain number of counts, hold for a certain number out. There are too many books you can read on this if you want to go deeper. But the simplest practice is in left, out right, with your natural pause, in right, out left. You can do this at any time. Sometimes all it just takes is a few breaths to calm you down and bring a bit of clarity of thought and get some spaces between these thoughts. Occasionally one nostril might be blocked. So you stick your hand under the opposite armpit. So if your left nostril is blocked, let me check for me for the moment. Both of mine seem quite clear today. This one's slightly, slightly blocked. But so I put my hand under my opposite armpit. So it's left when I want to clear, so under the right. You don't be passive. You take your hand and you firmly, almost aggressively, get it in there and squeeze. Squeeze tightly for a couple of minutes and see if that releases the opposite side. Or you can take your fist, jam it under again. You're not being polite about this. Get it in there and you can take your elbow, pull on your elbow and that gets it in deeper. It's actually uncomfortable. But nine times out of 10, it will clear the nostril. Unless you have some structural blockage from breaking your nose or from something like that. The sadhus in India, the spiritual men, they lie with a small um, crutch. They lie on the side with a small crutch and they jam it under their armpit until the side is cleared. Okay, I won't bore you today with the, with the parasympathetic and sympathetic. The reason why we do this, one is fight or flight, one is relaxation. But the, the body switches about every 90 minutes. In the homeostatic balance, it will switch. One nostril becomes more predominant about every 90 minutes or so. But of course, because of diet or posture or injury, stress, allergies, then this isn't always the case. Two fingers, two fingers, thumb. Bend the middle two down in whichever hand you're going to use. And you're left with the thumb and the ring finger. And this is what we're using to open and close the nostrils. So you always start, exhale through both nostrils, in left, Natural pause, out right, in right, out left. Nadi Shadana, it's a cleansing of the nadis. Okay, so in your own time, in left, out right, in right, out left. Pause for your space between inhalation and exhalation. Starting through both. Close the right, in left. Close the left, wait for your natural pause, out right. Wait for your natural pause, in right. Close the right. After your natural pause, out left.
and then just continue at your own leisure. As I say, there are many practices you can build up over months upon months, but they're not suitable for a class environment. Most people would get bored. One more round after the one that you're on. And just sit and relax. Now remember, if you're not used to sitting in this position, It may be a little distracting, but you're not gonna do any harm. And this is how you strengthen the mind. And with time, you can build it up so you can sit here for a prolonged period. You can put on a simple mudra, the thumb touching the first finger. You can put one hand on top of the other with the thumbs touching this, just keeps the energy circulating throughout the body. It does have different um, effects. Again, you can read all the books of different mudras and the effects are meant to have. But we're just trying to calm the body down at a simple, simple level. Try and get the stale air out of the lower lobes of the lungs. We're trying to oxygenate the blood so it can bring nutrition to the rest of the body. And with the breath, cleansing, it will calm the nervous system. And if you're very lucky, you might get some spaces between your thoughts this constant internal chatter that most people have because it's exhausting if you give it attention. Breathe, believe, and you will receive. Okay, we're going to do a couple um, inverted postures now. The preliminary plow, and then we'll go into the inverted posture, preliminary plow. So slowly release yourself from your sitting position. Line your back, adjust your clothing. Palms down the side of the body. A 
give everybody a few moments for the circulation to come back into the areas that we squeezed. Preliminary plow. So we take our feet to our seat. And what we're trying to do here is we're trying to keep as much of the lower back on the ground as possible. You can keep your hands at the side, palms down, or you can make them into fists and gently put them under the buttocks. That's what I like to do. And we're just going to bend at the knees, lift the legs up. And this is all we're looking for. We're looking to the first point, the first point of stretch in the lower back. I have a few challenges with my lower back, so I have to be careful with this one. And this is all we're looking for, the first point of resistance. So we're not looking to take it away back like this because we lift the lower back off the ground. We keep the buttocks in line with the fists or the buttocks on the ground if your hands are down the side of the buttocks. Inhale, we open. Exhale, we close. Very simple. Preliminary plow. Inhale, we open. Exhale, we close. If you start to get a little shake, then that means already it's too much for you for the moment. Inhale, open. Exhale, close. If you get in a shake, you can take your legs down. Give yourself a wee break. And you can go back to it. And raise, open and close. These are relatively strong, and you have to be very careful if you've lower back issues. Then we place the palms on the ground. We push down with the palms, which allows you to come up a bit further, roll over, and then the hands are on the hips, which give you wonderful support. And again, this is all we're looking for keeping the legs at this level, inverted position. We're not looking to take them away down and stretch your lower back and touch the ground, none of that nonsense today. And just you start to breathe slowly and deeply. When you feel you've had enough, you bend at the knees, place the hands on the ground, make sure you've got the support of the arms, and you slowly roll down without lifting the head. Stretch out both legs. We'll do Supta Pava Mukhtasana. That's the right leg, both legs, left leg. Inhale as we stretch, as we lift the right leg towards the body. Exhale as we gently squeeze at the knee, keeping the chin into the sternum. Inhale as we release. Exhale as we stretch out. Take a comfort breath if you feel you need it. Inhale as you take both feet towards your seat. Exhale as you clasp at the knee into a squeeze curl, chin into the sternum. You can stay in these positions for a number of breaths. 
Now you just inhale, release, stretch out. Now it's a left leg. Inhale as we bend, exhale as we clasp and squeeze. So it's right both and left because we're working on the ascending, transverse and descending colon. It's stretching the back, it's contracting the arms, you're breathing slowly and deeply, you're massaging the internal organs of the body, right, both, left. It's not load bearing. You're not using a massive amount of energy doing this. You're releasing toxins. Inhale before you squeeze, exhale as you squeeze out. So finish the round that you're on. Again, you, you could do this posture for 10, 15 minutes, and then you'll really feel the effect it has, how it affects you. And then we're lying in Shavasana. So your feet are floppy, slightly more than hip width apart. You're checking that your chin is not painting the ceiling. We don't want the head arched back like this. We want it in a comfortable position. Your palms are facing upwards, which keeps your shoulders open and relaxed. What I want you to try and do is, most of us have a, a lordosis, some stronger than others. It's just a curve, natural curvature of the lower back. So I just want you to take that and flatten it gently. And then release. Yep, so you're tilting the pelvic area. Just gently pushing it down and then let it release back to its natural position. Now relax all efforts. So your feet are floppy. Your palms are facing upwards. You can put on a mudra. You can touch your first finger with your thumb. The chin isn't painting the ceiling. Your shoulders are relaxed. And let the body breathe naturally. You're trying to let go of the old to make space for the new. The Sanskrit word for um, Shavasana is Marit, Marit Asana, the dead man's pose. You let go of the old to make space for the new. You're releasing tensions in the body. And with that, you're trying to increase the surface area of the body lying on the ground. So with every exhalation, you're softening and surrendering. You're letting go. With each exhalation, let go. And you can continue, or you can restart the mantra you were saying when we were standing up. With no movement, I am healthy. I am strong. I am full of vitality.
I am safe. All is well in my world. So just as you're lying there, letting go, softening and surrendering the body weight onto the ground, giving yourself a big pat in the back, I am healthy. I am strong. I am full of vitality. I am safe. All is well in my world. So as ever, I'll finish with the quote from Albert Einstein. The logical mind is a faithful servant. And the intuitive mind is a sacred gift. However, we have created a society that honours the servant and has forgotten the gift. I'll say that once more. The logical mind is a faithful servant. An intuitive mind is a sacred gift. However, we have created a society that honours the servant and has forgotten the gift. Albert Einstein. So as always, thank you very much. Namaste with much love.